far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never failed Oh, never fails You never fail You stay the same
confess that this morning. You take the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Say it again. You take the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You should do. You turn it for good. This morning, you take. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? Do you know what that means for you? That means the same God who split the sea so that they could escape. The same God that fought the battles for Gideon and for David and for Daniel. The same God who burned up the offering of Elijah. The same God who was walking around in the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew children. That's the God that's fighting for you today. He's the same God. He does not change. And when you recognize that, that's when you're able to Give him the battle. That's when I realized that it's not me doing the fighting. That it's not my job to win. It's my job to submit and to obey and to lay down my will for his. This is the hardest thing we can do as humans, by the way. We do not like to do this. We do not like to submit. We don't want to obey. But God's saying, if you do this, I will show up and fight the battle for you. That's my God. So you might be singing the song saying, well, victories, that, that's, those are for other people. That's for other people to have victories in their life. I'm just supposed to struggle and strive and sweat and cry and toss and turn all night. And I'm here to tell you, when you say, I'm going to see a victory, you have to say it from your mouth, from your heart, with your faith, that you believe it's going to happen. That you believe it's going to happen. How many know our faith pleases God? Let's sing this verse again. 
there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every walk you wage is he will win. So I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story ends. Let's sing this power one more time. Can we do that? So there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And every walk you wage is he will win. He's fighting for you. So I'm not backing down from any child. Cause I know how this story ends. I know. Cause I know how this story ends. Yes. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. Oh, say it again. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs. It belongs to you. He said, come and lay your burden down. Oh, come and lay your burden down. He said, cast your cares on me because I care for you. Come and lay your burden down. So why are you walking around trying to carry it alone? Oh, come and lay your burden down. Huh. Oh, come and lay. Oh, come and lay. Lay your burden down. To take my yoke upon me, for my yoke is easy and my burdens light. And learn from me, for I am humble and gentle. Oh, and I'll teach you how to walk in victory. Some of us need to walk in victory. It teaches how to walk in victory. Yes, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart so that I can see what you're doing in me, what you're doing in me. I'm gonna lay my burden down. Who knows what I'm talking about? Who's tired of carrying that burden? Yes. Wherever you are in this room, we're just gonna speak the name of Jesus and we're gonna lay it down at his feet, whatever it is, whatever it is, there's nothing too big or too small, we're just going to lay it down at Jesus' feet and we're going to leave it there, don't pick it up and walk out, he said leave it there, I don't know who this is for, maybe it's just for me, but he said lay it down and leave it there. 
Quit thinking that you're going to do it on your own. Quit thinking that you have to. Gonna lay it down. Just got to lay it down. Oh, lay it down. He's a chain breaker. He's a promise keeper. He's a sea part. Disease healer. He is the mender of broken hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes Lord. Somebody give him a shout this morning. Yes. Oh, we love you. If it's not too uncomfortable, let's just lift our hands one time to Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for everything you came here to do. We thank you that you're moving now. You're moving now. In ways that we can't see, you're fighting for us. You're working things together for us. You're setting us up, Lord, for victory. And we thank you for that. We claim that right now in the name of Jesus. I pray every, we know that every knee will bow, every tongue confess that you are Lord, but we're going to do it right now. Jesus, we love you. We say you are Lord. We say you are Savior. You are Redeemer and our Healer. You are my everything, Jesus. 
We just bless your name today. We glorify you. Let your name be praised by everything that you hear and see today. Let us live our lives to glorify you, Jesus. We ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen today? Yes, amen. amen, amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service this morning. I want to welcome you to Fellowship of the Nations. For you who are visiting with us, we want to give you a special thank you for being here today. It's Good morning. I love you, too. I'm so happy to see your faces. I tell you, it's such a blessing to see our friends and our family coming back week after week, getting back together to see each other and fellowship together. It, it, I can't tell you what it does for me because I get to see you all. I stand from this perspective and I get to see all of your faces and I can tell you from all of us, it's such a blessing to have you here. We love you, we love worshiping with you and we wanna thank you for coming today. We especially want to thank our visitors for coming. We want to invite you to uh, be a part of our tithing this morning such a blessing if you ever want to know uh, what god can do through the blessing of being obedient to tithe come and see me after church we don't have time now for me to tell you all the things that god has done in our lives tillery and i have we don't have enough time to tell you all the blessing and all of the reward that comes from being obedient to tithe so i want to encourage you don't let fear come in in a scary time, if you're low on funds, if, you're, if you think you can't afford to tithe, I tell you, you cannot afford not to. Do not cheat yourself out of the blessing that's waiting for you because the Word of God says it, right? We've, he will provide. There's countless people here that will tell you. So I just want to encourage you. I appreciate the opportunity to stand here and say, don't let fear come in, but just be obedient and then watch what God will do. And then we'll all be waiting to hear, okay? Because he'll do it. And we make it easy for you. We have three easy ways of giving. You can give uh, online, you can give through text mobile giving, or you can give through the envelope that's on the seat in front of you. So we're going to come and ask God to bless our tithe this morning. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity and the freedom to come and be here today. Thank you, God, that, that we can freely come and worship you together. Father, we just ask that you would take what we give today, Father, and multiply it, that you would put it to your use, that you would uh, use it for your kingdom, Father, that you would uh, meet every need that we have and that we would be able to give to the needs of others. God, we thank you and we ask you to bless those who give and are obedient in this area, Father. We thank you that you're obedient to do that. You are faithful to do that whenever we are obedient. Father, we just praise you for this day. We ask you to be with us in this week of thanksgiving that we set aside for this, Father, that we would remember to be thankful every day. Father, thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the service this morning. We ask that you would just bless everyone here. In your sweet son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Though I wake to a world with more questions than answers, where dissonant voices ignite division, my heart will stand firm in this decision. I choose thankful. Though I walk through a landscape that is uncharted and foreign, where the once familiar seems lost and forgotten, I will remember that nothing is unexpected to my Father in heaven, and I choose thankful. Though I live each day uncertain of tomorrow, I will accept that tomorrow was never certain and cherish every chance to witness the wonder of creation. I choose thankful. I choose faith in what is unseen, hope for a future beyond the adversity, love spoken despite animosity. I choose to believe. Though the struggles I face may be painful, though it sometimes seems impossible, though I fall a thousand times covered in the dust of failure, I am able to rise. Not because I am strong, not because life is perfect, but because in all circumstances, Jesus lives. When 
when this world stands perplexed and demands I give a reason for the hope that I have, I can only say that in Jesus' name, I choose thankful. It's not a simple choice. It's not an easy choice. But it is the only choice that brings calm in the storm. Not by my power, but through the strength of Christ alone. I choose thankful. the people said. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Everybody's good? Yeah, good to see you guys. Amen. We got some special guests. Lori is here, Hannah and her family. Glad you guys are here. And uh, well, let's give a big old warm welcome to our online congregation. Hello, guys. <laughs> welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, we are so excited. We know some are still at the house, and uh, man, some are, are, are going through. I mean, they are uh, quarantined, and they're doing all types of things. Man, we're here today, so I'm glad you're here. Amen? It's all good. I mean, man, I'd rather be here than a hospital, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that's just, that's just me. But uh, anyway, anybody got the word? word? Word up. Let's hold it in the air like you really, really care. Say it together. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. It is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I will hide his word in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Holy Spirit, give me ears to hear and strength to obey. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I want you to turn uh, in your Bibles. We're going to be talking today about thankfulness. Now, uh, you're saying, you know, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. You know, we have a lot to be thankful for. And then you're looking at me going, wait a minute, it's 2020. It's pandemic. It's COVID. It's rioting. It's all those things. But, man, we have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. And so I just wanted to just, uh, jump in today. We're just going to go through this. Don't, um, I really can't, can't remember how many messages over the years I've even preached on this. So this is kind of new. And, and some of this was really a, just kind of a meditation of, of walking through the times where it's really tough to be thankful. But I want us to look at thankfulness this morning, all right? So are y'all with me? I want you to take some notes, if you would. We're going to jump in. And then uh, I hope at the end we're going to have our... Uh, time of communion, the Lord's Supper, and uh, we, don't want to, um, we don't want to be complaining, we want to be thankful, right? Have you ever been in a, in a conversation and it just got negative, you know, and you're thinking, man, I don't even like this conversation, and you just stopped and said, you know, I just want to thank God for this. I want to thank God for answering this prayer. You know, we can talk about maybe your finances are down or whatever, and then you just look at all the different things that God has blessed you with. How you're, you have so much to be thankful. So today I want us to talk about that because the best way to change a bad attitude or a negative conversation or uh, even a troubled heart is just to take time to be thankful. We have a lot to be thankful with. I share with you guys a lot, um, you know, about us going to Panama. And selfishly, one of the reasons why I go, it keeps me focused on being content with what I have. You know, we, uh, we do our... Our uh, tournaments, our golf tournaments over at River Terrace is where Lori works, and uh, they help us in raising some funds and, and going. And, and you can go to a place like that, and then if you forget, the Lord will remind you that, you know, you can go in and you can turn that light on, and all of a sudden you got electricity. You know what I'm talking about. Many of you have been to Panama, and, uh, you know, you're not sleeping in a grass hut. There's not a hammock. It's not a dirt floor. You know, God is good. And so we get sometimes a little bit spoiled. Would we even anybody admit that? Okay. America, we're spoiled. I mean, you know, no matter what you say. You know, I remember being in, in Cuba, and we had a basketball team down there. And this guy asked me, he said, he, you know, we, we were sitting, it was him and his sister and his wife. I mean, they were really thin. And we were in Havana, and we were at this restaurant. We took these couple with us and, and his sister. And he asked me, he said, how many Meals do you eat a day? And one of my teammates, he said, uh, well, as many as we want. You know, I mean, we got fast food, you know, McDonald's. I mean, how many different fast food places can you just go get food? And he looked at us and he said, well, you know, in the morning, this is what's for us. We have a, a glass of water. We put sugar in water. We stir it, Cuban Coca-Cola. 
And then at lunch, we have sugar and water. We stir it up, and it's Cuban Coca-Cola. And then at night, we got a little, you know, a little rice and maybe a little beans and maybe just a little bit of meat sometimes, maybe some chicken, and that's all we have, right? I mean, talking about breaking your heart, you know, I'm thinking, oh, man, here we're struggling with trying to keep weight off. They can't even keep weight on, you know? And when you think of those things, places you've been, and you, you think, you know what? We have nothing really to complain about. You know, there's a lot that we can be, be thankful for. And what, what I love was they came and they brought us stuffed flounder, right, at this restaurant. And this guy, he looked down at it. He said, we don't eat this much in a week. I said, but today God has provided. Let's eat. And man, I'm telling you what, they dug in. It was just amazing. And that's one of the most, I guess, life-changing of all the trips I've had. That one table conversation has kept me thankful for even the little things that we have, right? So if you think you've got it bad and, and, uh, and you're going through Whataburger and they, you wanted onions on yours and they didn't put your onions in there, you know, don't complain, all right? You wanted cheese on your double meat Whopper, don't complain if they didn't put your cheese on there, all right? Let's be thankful. Are you with me? All right. So we're going to talk. So when was the last time you gave thanks for your salvation? When was the last time that you told your spouse or your children thanks for something they've done? When was the last time that you sat down and you thought about all the things to be thankful for in your life, even to the smallest detail, to write them down and say, God, thank you, even for the air that I'm breathing? Because I remember termite and tillery on a vent, and they couldn't breathe at all, and they needed a machine, and God, I'm not, I'm, I'm not having to have a assistance in breathing. God, thank you. Are we getting the picture? Are we, are we, are we understanding now we got some things to be thankful for? All right, listen, that's all I want to do this. So today, during this Thanksgiving season, I'm going to look at a few things that uh, I want us to be thankful for and giving thanks. And let me tell you, it's not always easy to give thanks. All right? I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you the, uh, the, the truth. There's, there's times in our life that we don't. And so we come to this, be thankful and there's a lot of things to be thankful for, but there are times and maybe circumstances, and let me just say this, because this may be where you are. You may be in a situation right now or circumstances in your life, in your workplace, with your children, your marriage, whatever it may be, and you're, and maybe it's your health, and you're saying, I don't know if I can be thankful for this. I'm not understanding this. This is a hard day or it's a hard season in my life. And then we come to this, First one that we're going to, we're going to give thanks, and we're thankful in every circumstance. Here we go. This is the one that I had to really meditate on. I'm just going to share with you what I believe the Lord uh, had shared with me. So here it is. You know, in every circumstance, condition, he says, give, give thanks. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18, it says this, never stop praying in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is one of the most difficult, at times, scriptures that I've seen. Because I've counseled with people, and they've gone through the hard times, and they say, how am I supposed to give God thanks for this one? Are you with me? This is where we come. It says, but here's what, we, here's what we're seeing. But God... Are you seeing what I'm going through? Have you been there? Are, are you really seeing me? Do you care about what I'm going through? Have you ever asked those questions? You know what I'm talking about. You know, this is painful. I don't like it. You know, I'm not feeling good. I'm struggling. You know, I just need this. But look what we see here. It says, it says never stop praying. And one of the things the Lord has shown me is he wants you to understand that when you're going through the tough times of life, make sure that you don't stop praying but that you're focused on the one who can handle the situation. See, when you're, when you're focused on, on Jesus Christ, if I'm praying and I keep my focus on him, I'm not focusing on the circumstances. I'm not circ on, on the conditions. We, we just sang the song that he's going to, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's going to give us a victory. What the devil, the enemy meant for evil, he's going to turn it for good. Do y'all believe that? I mean, it's more than just singing a song. It's a declaration of our faith. 
that right when we get in the middle of something and we don't understand it and we're missing those that may have passed or, or, or something has happened in our life, we have to come and say, wait a minute, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Do you know what the will of God is? Giving thanks. That's, it's, not only, it's not talking about even the bad circumstances, but even the, the, the act of giving thanks is God's will. Grab a hold of these truths. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help myself because we're, we're, we're seeing it. So prayer is connected to thanksgiving. Prayer keeps us focused. And uh, giving thanks is the will of God. Look what it, what it says in Philippians 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. What does it say? Instead, pray about everything. A very familiar passage of Scripture, but when you apply it to this, it, there again it's saying, keep your focus on me. Talk to me. All right, how many of you guys have seen the, uh, you, you've seen, it's called The Chosen. Have y'all seen that? All right, it's online. If you don't, get the app, The Chosen. Okay, if you had not seen it, see it. I mean, the acting is amazing, right? Sometimes in, in days past, there have been kind of some cheesy Jesus movies, you know what I'm talking about? This, you need to see it. You can go online, people pay it forward. When you get the app, I mean, the first season's been done. I think there's like eight episodes. I'm telling you, Lisa and I were talking about this. This is what I love about Jesus, and I said, this is what I want more of. I see Jesus walking and hanging out with these guys, these disciples. You know, they're just walking along, and they're talking, and they're having conversation. You know, I saw this one the other day. I was watching it, and it was uh, Jesus with the, the miracle at the wedding, the first miracle, right? And here Jesus is, and they're all, you know, they're dancing, you know, and I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm thinking, I, I want to do that with you. I, I want to I hang out with you. I want to, you know, it, it's like we put Jesus in this box of religion, you know. We just got this, well, I got to be, you know. Well, we're reverent, but Jesus wants this relationship with us. And even when we're going through the hard times, he's saying, hey, let's just come walk with me. Just come down the road and talk to me. You know, let's hang out. You know, I saw one, this one of uh, the Matthew where Jesus was talking while he was doing it. He had a banana and he was eating this banana and, and he was sitting there and he, and he walked past and he put the peeling on, uh, on Peter's head. You know, I thought, I want that. You know, I want to hang out with Jesus because when times get tough, I just want to know him. You know, I wanted to talk with him. I want us to laugh together. Does that make sense? You know, I mean, when you, when you got to, you just got to see the chosen. I'm just telling you, that's, that's. That's one of your assignments for your uh, Thanksgiving. It will bless you. It will bless I'm telling you, and, and I'll, I'll say this. It's not in my notes. But listen, there is a scene with Jesus and Nicodemus. If you haven't seen that, that scene, I'm telling you, you will weep. You will weep. It is so powerful because he's understanding who Jesus is. It is so, so good. Let's move on. I'm trying to help you. So he's saying, let's, let's be thankful in every condition, even in adversity as well as prosperity. You know where we usually get in trouble? We get in trouble when things are going so good we forgot to who blessed us, right? Man, hey, I don't, I don't need God. All my bills are paid, everything else. Well, wait a minute. In prosperity, he says, thank me. Where do you think it came from, right? God's the one that gives all blessing. He's the one that gives all good gifts. He's the giver of all of that. Thank him. Those in the, in the middle of that. So in our darkest hours, it's, it's difficult to give God thanks because we cannot see the future. We cannot see his hand at work on our behalf. This is where we dig in in our faith and say, God, even though I can't see what the future is, you're Alpha and Omega beginning and the end, and you're already there, and you're already working this for my good, and I'm trusting you, and God, you're in control of my life, so I'm going to rest in you. I'm going to thank you that you are going to make all things work together for my good. And everything gives thanks, Father, because this is your will for my life. I'll go through this season because I know that you got this. In these times of emotions, this is what the Lord showed me. In these times of emotions, emotions can override our faith. The pain of our wounds can blind us to his work in our lives. Can anybody relate to that? The very thing that we're going through, we, we feel the pain, we feel the hurt, we have, have the emotions of, of circumstances, we got people from the outside talking to us, they're stirring up negative emotions, all that, and we can't see what God is trying to do in our life. And he's saying, look, I've got you. 
in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God. God has taken us somewhere, and we won't make it in these circumstances. He must bring about a new thing in our lives to produce his will in our lives. Let me, let me say that again. He must bring about something new in our life in order to bring about his will in our life. All right? Let, let, let me explain it. In 1980, I went through a very painful situation, right? I did not understand it. I didn't, I didn't understand that, that scripture. I, I didn't like it. You know, I, what's good about this? But God knew in 1980, going through this pain, he says, if you will thank me in this, because I know that in 2000, you cannot be the pastor of an implant fellowship of the nations unless I do a thing here. All right, I'm taking you somewhere. Yeah, it may be painful, but you got to trust me. Yeah, it's hard right now because you can't see the future, but I already see the future. I already see some. I've got to work my plan in your life. I can't do it unless you go through this situation. Some of you, you're going to have to grab a hold of that one. You don't understand it. I didn't understand it at the time, but I'm telling you, when God is at work, we trust him and we keep on rolling. Are you all with me? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? You. Turn to your neighbor and say he's talking about you. He's talking about you. All right? Whatever you're going through, God's at work in your life. So we want to give God thanks in the circumstances. I feel like this one, if you, if you grab a hold of this, no matter what the future holds, right? No matter what the future holds. I mean, we're still, you know, we got this vote going and we got court cases. We got all types of things, you know. I mean, this nation could be on a powder keg. We don't know. But we're not going to worry about it. Why? Because in everything, we're going to give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ. He may be coming soon, right? He may be getting ready to take us out of here, all right? So we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to trust him, okay? So we're not going to fret. We're not going to fear. We're not going to get caught up on all the news. Come on, somebody. Uh, anybody watching less news? Come on, so say you're, yes. Thank you, Jesus, all right? That's right. I am. I'm hardly watching even any, any TV. I'm just like, man, forget that stuff. God's got it under control. Here we go. Give thanks for God for creating us. For creating us. We're going to give God thanks for all our circumstances and no matter what. But you know what? I want, I want you to just, just take a moment to give God thanks for creating you. Because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank God for you. And you know what? You need to look in the mirror and say, God, thank you for making me. Because you know what? All, all the commercials, everything else, all the 17 magazine girls, you know, they're going to make it where they're going to they're gonna make you going to hate the way you look. You know, you're not six foot eight and 102 pounds. <laughs> you know, that, that's the model, right? Well, well hey, they, they, want, they don't want you to like yourself. Well, guess what? God did not make junk. He made you. And look, look what it says in Psalm 139, 14. It says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. All right? Husbands, this is not a time to say anything. It didn't say complicated. All right? So, so don't be talking to your wives right now, all right? That's not what he's saying. He says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You know what? I just, I just want you to take a moment and just see how wonderful you are. Now, we know that we're all sinners. We're not, we're not you know, tooting our horns saying that we're, we're all this and that or arrogant or anything like that. But I, I think that in a day when we have just an onslaught of suicides and depression and, and, and uh, all, I mean, this, the piles of things that people are having to go through, you know what? They forgot who they are. That they're fearfully and wonderfully made. That God not only has a plan for you, but he made you exactly like he wanted you to be. You know, he looked at you and said, man, I did a great job on you. Quit, quit being so negative about it, right? You know, if some guy built a car, you know, and it looked like a beautiful car, and he liked the car, and you went up there and went, I think that car stinks. That's ugly. You know, he wouldn't like it too much. Would you agree? But if you're looking in the mirror all the time, you're saying, man, that's one ugly thing. God, I don't know why you did that, but, uh, you know. He said, no, I made you wonderful. I think, I think when we begin to thank God for this is who I am, sometimes we're getting, some of us, we're getting older. We don't look the same as when we were 20, right? 
but it doesn't matter. We're still on a mission for God, right? And we're still rolling. Huh? Any, does anybody like yourself? Huh? You love yourself? You okay? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. We can do that. All right, have you ever thought, listen, thought about how wonderfully complex you are? All right, each, listen, if you just take just a moment of the human anatomy, and you look at, I mean, just, just study, if you've never studied, just study the eye, study the ear, study the brain, study the respiratory system, the digestive system, reproductive system, study all of the systems, you know, your immune system. It is amazing the, the complex creature that you are, right? You are amazing. God wants you to see that. He wants you to thank him for making you so, so wonderfully uh, complex, right? He's at work in us, through us. He's creating the temporal, this complex earth suit, what? To bring about eternal fruit in ministry. Do you know that he made you? It, it's, it's just like this. When they designed the, the computers and the iPhones and all those type of things, they had a specific purpose. When God made you, he made you with a personality. He made you with a purpose. He gave you some desires, right? God gives you the desires of your heart. He gives you desires. Some of you, you like to fish. Some of you like to hunt. Some of you are mechanics. Some of you, you know, you like boxing. Some of you like all kinds of stuff. You don't all like the same. Why? Because he made you different. And he wants to take who you are and the skills and the talents he's given you, and he wants to use it for his glory, right? And you didn't wake up in the morning and say, God, thank you. You've made me incredibly complex. I'm ready to surrender my life to you so you can use me today for your glory. Bring about fruit in my life. Are y'all with me? All right. God created you. He lives in you. So rejoice in giving thanks for that. Amen. That's what you need to do. Come on, let's go. Anyway, so now we're not only circumstances and thank God for us, but we're going to give God thanks for our freedom of worship. Here's where I want to help you with something. A lot of times we think that I have to come to church to worship. But do you know what? The moment that we recognize his presence in our life, we are worshiping. We begin to worship. Look, look what it says in Psalm 100, verse 4. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. There's that word again. Enter into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Right? So when we, we enter, we choose to worship Jesus the moment that we recognize, hey, you're here. And when you're here, what do you do? You have a conversation with him. You talk to him. Right? If you go see a friend... And you're there, you're, you recognize his presence, her presence. You're talking to him, right? You can share stories. You can laugh. You know, all these type of things. I sat down with a good friend the other day. Don't get to see him very much, Larry Manus. All right? And, uh, you know, we're just talking, talking all the time. It's just great to talk about the Lord with friends, you know? And he began to share with another guy. He goes, see that guy over there? And he's talking, he goes, man, when I was at my darkest, when I was strung out on drugs, Johnny Brady was praying that God would save my soul, right? Not only Johnny Brady, but Mama Brady back there was praying for Larry, too. Anyway, he, she's praying for all of us. I mean, it was, yeah, amen. You, yeah, Halifax, baby. We, we, hey, we made it. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, but, but you, you, you step into the presence of the Lord. You know, I was driving in the truck the other day, and it was like one of those moments when God just said, I'm, I'm here. You know, it's like, and I just, I, you know, I don't know how you worship, how you pray. I just like to talk out loud. I don't know if you see me driving down the road, you know, and I'm just talking. I'm talking to Jesus, all right? I'm not crazy. I'm talking to him, all right? But I, I'm, I'm telling you, there were some things that I wanted to talk to him about. I was asking for wisdom. I was asking, you know, I had this meeting to go to, and I was, you know, going through all this. And I, I just said, Lord, I just I want nothing but your will to be done. It's amazing. When we get into the presence of the Lord, we can worship him in spirit and in truth. We can listen to him. And I'm telling you, at the right time, God will direct you, and he will put a peace in your heart. Before the day was over, he showed me exactly what to do. It was just, poof. And I'm like, oh, I got it. Thank you. Right? Are you, can you relate to what I'm talking about? That's why this, this illustration, man, you got you to gotta understand. How often do we really worship him? Give thanks and praise him when we, when we do not know the answer. You with me? Lord, I don't know what's happening. 
But God, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. We're living in a time when, here, here's the truth. Some states are trying to close down churches. Like in New York right now, the Catholic church and the Jewish uh, synagogues, are, they got a lawsuit against the, their government, their state, right? Because they're trying, they're, they can't worship. All right, let, let, let me tell you, we are going to be thankful that we can worship not only in here, but we can worship out there, right? And as long as we are in here, these doors are going to be open. Amen? We're not shutting the doors here, right? We're going to allow a, a, a place to worship. Amen? All right? We're, we're going to roll with it. No matter what anybody says, I think God wants us to, uh, to keep on. So our doors are always going to be open for worship. All right? We can and we should worship him. Thank him. Listen, this is, I want you to grab this. Thank him for his presence and the ability to worship him. All right? Just, I mean, in, in your quiet time, before you go to sleep, when you wake up, you know, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord should be praised. Your walk with him should be just a constant. Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for how you take care of me. Thank you for your presence in my life. Lord, even when the circumstances are tough, I thank you. Thank you that you made me incredibly complex. But now I want to thank you, Father, for my salvation. All right? Why do we thank him more than anything else? Not that he made us. Man, he made us. But, man, we sinned against him. We thank him for our salvation. This is where we're going to focus. This, I am thankful for the gift of salvation. And let's look at it. Aren't you glad when you get a gift? You know? I mean, you, you got one. I mean, it's, here, the, the thing with salvation is there's no way we could earn it. There's no way that we could save enough money to buy this gift of salvation. God says, hey, I got a gift. It's eternal life, but you got to work for the next 50 years, and you'll be able to buy it if you save your money, you know. No, that's not it. It's a free gift. Do you get what that? The greatest gift that we can ever have in our lives is free, but Jesus is the one who purchased it. When's the last time he said, thank you for the greatest gift of all, my salvation that you purchased for me, right? Look what it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. It's a gift. In Romans 3, 23, very familiar passage of Scripture, but I just want us to be thankful for this. It says, the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is a gift. Take some time today. In a moment, and this is what I'm leading up to, in a moment, we're going to take our communion. I want you to focus on what Jesus Christ did so that you and I could have the gift of salvation. If we come to our time of thanksgiving, this is the one area that we need to be thankful for. For his grace, by his grace, when we believe, man, we can't take credit for it. It is a gift. And also, I'm thankful for his sacrifice. One of the things in, in your life and in my life, and this is where, and honestly, I need to do it more. I'll just, I'm just being honest. I need to do it more. But I need to focus on my time of worship and it's hard. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Anybody see the, the Passion of the Christ? You saw, you know, that is a hard movie to watch. I'm telling you, I saw it once, and then I saw it again down in Panama, and then I saw part of it one other time, and man, it just, I mean, it hurts me. It's so graphic, right? It's just hard to look at. But I need to meditate on what Jesus did so that my sins could be forgiven. And that I could have eternal life. And you need to do the same thing. All right? We need to meditate on Jesus and what he actually went through. It's not an Easter season. It's Thanksgiving season. And we need to be thankful for what he did. I'm thankful for the sacrifice. Hebrews 9.28, it says, So also Christ was offered up once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. Anybody in here sin? All right, we're all on the same page. For the sins of many people, he will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting on him. He was offered for every single one of us. 
We need to be thankful for that. Jesus, when I'm whining, when I'm complaining, when I'm fearful, when I'm not getting my way, when I feel like I'm uncomfortable and I just want to, you know, gripe a little bit, no. Let's go back to the cross and let's put our whole life back in perspective. Amen? Amen. All right, here we go. 2 Corinthians 5.21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. We were wrong. And God gave a son who never knew any sin. Think about that. I mean, we can't hardly go through a day without a struggle, right? He lived 33 and a half years. He never sinned one time. He was the holy lamb of God, and he never knew sin, but he made us right. I'm thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus. And then I'm also thankful for the new life that he's given me. Anybody thankful for new life? Man, we give thanks to God for your new life. Can I just, okay, we don't want to just jump too far back in there, but can you remember how it used to be? Can you remember the old you? <laughs> Are you now thankful for the new you? Uh, that we're new creatures in Christ, amen? <laughs> Woo, that, now I'm, I'm telling you, sometimes as Christians, we forget that. You know, we get kind of casual in our Christianity, well, thinking I'm saved and I'm forgiven. No, he was, let's don't forget the pig pen that he brought us out of to make us who we are today. Amen? Amen? Be thankful. In this season of Thanksgiving, let's don't forget his, uh, the free gift and his sacrifice, and then I'm thankful for my new life. Titus 3.5, he said, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Here we go. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. I can't thank him enough. I can't thank him enough. That God, you would love me enough to save me, cleanse me of every sin I've ever committed, wash it away, throw it as far as the east is from the west into the deepest part of the sea and never to remember it anymore. You're not going to hold that against me? Ha! Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stand before you Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. We have a lot to be thankful for. Let's don't forget this ought to, I mean, if you're going to walk a spiritual life with Jesus Christ, this ought to be the common denominator of all of our lives. The man we wake up, oh, thank you, Jesus. I am a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. In 1 Peter 1 23, we're coming to a close. It says, For you have been born again but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eter eternal living word of God. Amen? I'm telling you, we have a lot. We just finished that uh, series on heaven. We know where we're going. Amen? It's amazing what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you the best really is yet to come. We have a lot to be thankful for. And again, I will say, if Jesus was to come today, we're going to go, we'll stand, we'll be evaluated on how we live, not our salvation, but how we served. We're going to stand before him, and it's, I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to have the wedding feast like nobody's business. It's going to be amazing. We have a lot, not only to be thankful for in our past, but we have a lot to be thankful for of what's coming up in our future. All right? Don't get stuck in one spot, always be looking. Thank you for God, you took me out of that, but Lord, I thank you that you're taking me somewhere. And in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed just for a moment. I want you to take a moment, and I want you from your heart to his. Thank him. I want you just to thank him. And you may be going through some tough circumstances right now. But just thank him. Lord, I don't understand why this is happening or why this difficulty that's going on, but I trust you and I thank you that you're going to work everything for my good. I thank you for that. Thank you for creating you, for not only giving you life and salvation, but thank you for giving you purpose. You're here not just to breathe air on this planet. You're here 
to fulfill the purpose of God. God wants to do something amazing in your life. He created you with purpose. Thank him for that. Ask him, Lord, show me why you created me. If I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, tell me. Show me. I want to be used by you. Thank you that you're going to lead me. And I want you to thank him for salvation. And not to dwell on your past and all the ugliness of it, but you know. Just thank him. Thank him for the forgiveness of sin. Thank him for the sacrifice that he made to make it possible that we could be forgiven. Thank him for that. And right where you are, there may be some here. You do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I want to make it really clear. If you're sitting here and you say, Lord, am I saved? Has there been a change in my life? If that hasn't happened, the Holy Spirit will tell you. You're either saved or you're lost. And if you're not saved and you hear that you're lost, listen, let me give you good news. Today can be the day of salvation. We're not talking about, we're not talking about a church membership. We're talking about you. Confessing that you're a sinner confessing your need for Jesus and that he's here to say, I have already done the work and I offer you the gift of salvation. And when you take the gift, you're committing your life to follow me and obey in me because I'm going to take you somewhere. I created you with purpose. If you're here this morning, you have never been born again. I'd like for you just to raise your hand and say, Pastor, I want to get this straight. I want to make sure before I leave here today that I am truly born again. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. Nobody looking around. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. But this is life's greatest decision. If that's you, you can get this right today. The most important decision we ever make. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? For those watching online, you may say, Pastor, I've never been born again. This is what the Word of God says. It says that we're all sinners, every single one of us. But it says that God demonstrated His love for you and me, that He gave His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross even while we're sinners. And that if we would confess with our mouth, Jesus Christ, believe in our heart, God raised Him from the dead, we will be saved right now. Right now. It's a spiritual birth that happens. You become a new creature in Christ. And you can do it right now. I'm going to invite the entire congregation to pray along with you. And for those who raised their hand, and right now you can pray. But not just repeat a prayer. You're making a commitment from your heart to the heart of Jesus himself. Let's pray this prayer. Church family, pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I have sinned against you, and I'm sorry. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways. And I turn to you, Jesus. I open the door to my heart. I invite you to come in. Forgive me of all my sin. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Save my soul. Give me eternal life. Baptize me in the power of your Holy Spirit so I may live for you, serve you, obey your word, love you all the days of my life. I ask in faith, and I believe in my heart that you, Jesus, rose again on the third day so that I could be saved today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. You're my Lord. You're my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being a part of our online streaming. I hope you really enjoyed the message today. And I want you to just take it to heart. Whatever the Lord has spoken to you, just take it to heart. And, and I pray that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that today would be that day. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. So that's what we're praying for you. 
And if you're wondering, how do I get to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, let me tell you, it's pretty simple. First of all, Jesus loves you more than anybody on this planet. So let me tell you, he's wanting you to know him. So as you come to him, we recognize, one, that we've sinned against God. Everybody has. The Bible says that all have sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Well, we recognize that one. We don't have to be told that. We know that. The second thing is, it says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that's you. God loves you even though that we were sinners. That's how much he cares for you. So you got to get it out of the way. He's not judging you. He already sent his son to die in our place so that we could have all of our sin placed upon him. And then we believe we had faith in him that that's what he did. And he did it because he loved us. The Bible says the wages of our sin is death. Well, Jesus took our death sentence for us. But then it doesn't leave it as a negative. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. It's not works. It's not a a church membership somewhere. It's not giving money to somebody. All of those are good things, but this not, does not bring salvation. So now, how do you get there? It's only in Jesus. So simply just open your heart and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me. I want to turn away from all the stupid stuff that I'm doing. And I want to turn to you. I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, the boss of my life. And Jesus, come in and save me. I want to love you. I want to live for you. I want to obey your word all the days of my life. And that's what you can do. Pray that prayer right now. And I'll tell you, Jesus is waiting. And the moment, the instant you do that, you will be saved. And my encouragement to you, find a great Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Get connected. Now, if you're in the Houston area, man, we would love to have you at Fellowship of the Nations. But if you're in different parts of the country or even around the world, Find somewhere that they're preaching Jesus, and I promise you it will change your life. Hope you can join us again next week, and uh, up until then, we'll be praying for you. Pray for us. We'd love to hear from you. Just go on our website, FOTN.org, Fellowship of the Nations, and let us hear from you. God bless you.